So three altcoins I can't wait to buy on a dip. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Nick of Jupiter here. I'm not here to waste your time, so let's skim through this article. Rectember, they're saying Rectember instead of September because historically September is a bearish month for the crypto markets. If you look at this chart right here, we go to the September column and most Septembers since 2013 have been red, but that's not to say that we can't have a green September. However, if we do continue bearish here, these are the six altcoins I'm looking to buy on a dip. Let's start with number one. Number one is Solana, right? This one needs no introduction. I've done a bull case on Solana, the future of everything. I've done a top altcoins you need to know on Solana, a beginner's guide to the Solana ecosystem, all, all of that, right? So Solana, it's just been chilling here um, above the moving averages. On the yearly time frame. it's just an impulsive move and a high tight flag. You just have to be patient with this one. If you're already holding it, stay aboard. You can accumulate above the one year moving average. It's showing relative strength and something we added here to the Jupiter orbit is very cool, right? We could always compare relative strength to the stock market, which of course is interesting, but now we can compare it to Bitcoin to Ethereum, which probably makes even more sense for Solana. You can see it got even darker, right? When it's thick and dark green, it's outperforming Ethereum, which makes more sense because this is a smart contract platform, a layer one blockchain makes more sense to compare towards Ethereum um, as opposed to Bitcoin. And you can see the outperformance, right? It's just holding steady. And you can you can see that on a chart, but it's just nice to visualize it. How can we see that on a chart? Well, Ethereum is below the one year moving average, right? It's trending down. It's not high tight flagging. So Solana, again, looks pretty good here. I mean, you can see it when this thing dipped to the one year moving average, it got bought up. You can see the volume on that week. So there are a lot of diamond holders. There are people who come in to defend the bullish trend and i think this thing is just waiting to explode to all-time highs on the next market move the next one's rather interesting my next pick is tron trx now this is a controversial coin sometimes they're a huge community right they're a huge community in asia justin sun a huge chinese community and so a couple of things about tron they're number 10 in terms of market cap they're a smart contract platform just like ethereum just like solana there's no dilution right it's fully diluted right uh, the supply is already fully out that means you don't have to worry about inflation or supply increase devaluing your holdings that's very good you don't have to worry about that supply pressure why is tron doing Doing so well i mean and, and what i say that well look at the chart right look at the tron chart this thing is outperforming right it's near all-time highs it's closer than any other coin to all-time highs it's forming this giant cupping pattern right so it's ready for a cup and handle if you go to the daily time frame you can see that recent impulsive move look at the strong outperformance the entire year over ethereum but again in august strong move in august what I want to do here is draw a Fibonacci retrace from, from swing low to swing high. We're not even at the 382 yet. So, you know, I think you can be patient with this one, but it's certainly one you have to be paying attention to. Here's the most recent high. We broke through that level, impulsive move. Look at the volume. We're pulling back. We just reached the moving average, right? But we did tag right in the lower time frame. So give it some time. You know, this is kind of your kill zone right here, uh, right there. And so you look for an entry but it's definitely an interesting one. It's pulling back on lower volume. That's pretty good. Something to note here. I mean, if you look at the stats, Tron is second to Ethereum in terms of fees. Tron generates $914 million over the past 180 days. So the past six months, that's versus Ethereum's 1.09 billion. Tron's number two in total value locked after Ethereum, right? There's $8.17 billion locked into Tron. And unlike the rest of the top five or six here, it's increasing over the past month while money is flowing out of these other chains, right? And so the discrepancy is actually bigger than you think because look at this divergence, right? Tron has eight and Ethereum has $47 billion in TVL, more than six times Tron's. But Tron is making way more than one sixth of the fees of Ethereum. It's making 90% of the fees of Ethereum. So why is that, right? Why is that with a much less TVL, much less value locked on the ecosystem, can it generate nearly the same amount in fees and revenue as Ethereum? And that's even more impressive when you consider that Ethereum has tremendous gas fees. The gas fees are much higher on Ethereum and on Tron, they're cheap, they're instant. But that's the key because of the them being cheap because of them being instant there are many more users of the tron blockchain right and it's used more actively each day we come here to artemis what we can see let's go to chain compare right ethereum and tron and there you have it right daily active 
addresses. Take a look at this, right? Tron is up here at 2.3 million and Ethereum's at 340,000, right? So about eight times, almost 10 times as many users. Same thing as transactions, 8 million versus 1 million, eight times as many transactions every day, eight times as many people using the blockchain every day. So despite the fact that it has a much lower total value locked in the ecosystem, it's still a giant, right? It's still number two, and it's it's kind of slept on. People don't really consider Tron as a, people don't really talk about Tron. Um, despite the fact of that, and the fact that the gas fees are much lower, it's generating almost the same in revenue because much more active addresses, much more transactions every day. And what you can see here, if we go to this map, is very interesting. These are kind of the most used blockchains here. The chain composition of Tron, of course, most like 95% of this is wallet to wallet and stable coins. So people are using Tron for payments, for sending USDC, sending stable coins to each other, to and from the exchanges, for moving money very efficiently. It's essentially a FinTech app 3.0 which is what a lot of uh, crypto is aiming to solve anyways. And so it has its niche, it has its use case, it even has its demographic use case with a big following in Asia. Not sure, I think it has some staying power, right? It's been here for several cycles. And so I think Tron is very interesting, especially after this move on a technical analysis is one you gotta pay attention to. Moving on, I have Aave. So we have a DeFi pick. The first two were, were blockchains, right? Layer one blockchain, Solana and Tron. This is an, an application, a decentralized application, Aave. I've made a bull case for Aave. It. Will Abbott disrupt the financial system? You can check out that video right here. It's always been my favorite DeFi. And you can see um, this thing is just stay steady, right? We were out here when I made the video and I said, look at the accumulation, right? You can see the volume bars. You can see the volume bars, right? When it's selling off, there's no volume. But people buy it, people buy it. Selling off, no volume, accumulated, right? Accumulated on the up moves, right? And now it's been trending along the one year moving average, not doing much kind of crab walking sideways. Um, but again, it's trying to impulse move here again. This thing I think is being loaded. People are loading up on this thing, maybe institutions, maybe whales, who knows. Um, but this is a very strong coin as well. It's it's the largest DeFi token or it's the second largest after maker that, that kind of switches all the time. I'm not sure. Number 47 in terms of market cap. It has nice, uh, you know, most of it, there's no inflation essentially either. And, um, you know, go check out the bull case for the fundamentals of Aave, but it's essentially decentralized finance. So you can go keep custody of your coins. You can supply your coins. You can lend, you can borrow, you can earn interest, earn yield on that. You can take out flash loans and, and things of that nature, right? So pretty cool use case. Um, you guys know I'm huge on DeFi, right? So Aave is, um, you know, just trading steady. I, I think if you're going to look at a DeFi pick, pay attention to Aave. It is outperforming. Right? We can look at some others like Maker USD, and it's trending downwards, right? So Aave is showing relative strength in the DeFi space, right? Another thing you can do is go Aave USDT slash ETH USDT, right? When you're talking about tokens and not coins, right? Tokens within the ecosystem, what you want is to outperform the gas token, the native token of that ecosystem. Because for most people, the goal is to accumulate as much Ethereum as possible. If you're kind of an Ethereum person, if you're a Solana, accumulate as much Solana as possible or Bitcoin, right? And so if you look at these charts, this is where it's interesting because when Avid outperforms Ethereum, that's when you can really take advantage here. Crypto is all correlated, right? It's an asset class. It's a sector, essentially. It's like the EV sector, right? When all electric vehicles are going down, they're going down. Or the cybersecurity, they move together. A lot of crypto moves together. That's when it's priced in terms of the dollar. But when you start to look at these, at the cross pairs within each other, well then there's a lot more trading to be done and a lot more moves to be taken advantage of, right? So you see a move like this, Aave Ethereum, you had a green shade flip down here, for example, off a divergent pendulum. And if you took, you know, just just this move alone, uh, you, you know, it's over 100% or after the shade flip closed, 100% on your money, right? And so what does that mean? If you have 10 Ethereum and then you sold it for Aave at that moment in time, just a few weeks ago, when well, now you doubled it. Now you can sell your Aave and you have 20 Ethereum because you made 100% on your Ethereum. Um, but either way, what I like, it's not about that trade. What I like about this chart is a nice bottoming pattern, right? It's showing divergence. It's coming off a shade flip, lower time frame, green tag, impulsive move, outperformance. Here comes the golden cross in terms of the moving averages. Light green dot, dark green dot, momentum building, higher high, look for the higher low. It should continue outperforming against Ethereum. That's another thing that brings me to probably an alt season. We can talk about that in a future video. We talked yesterday in a stocks video about how it's time for the small caps and the mid caps. 
because the equal weighted S&P is outperforming. So money's rotating out of the large caps into the smaller cap plays. The same thing's happening in crypto here. You can see the tokens outperforming the large caps. This is alt season. This is risk on. This is anticipating interest rate cuts, right? Moving on, my next token, just a quick one. My next token is Fetch AI or the Artificial Super Intelligence Alliance. This is the weekly chart. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I made a video about it three days ago. So check out that, the bull case for Fetch. It is in this weekly uh, kind of beautiful channel right here um, on channel support. We had a nice shade flip morning star with divergent pendulum, nice volume, closed back above the one year moving average. And so I think that's a solid entry opportunity. And you know, you can ride this, you know, you can ride this, whatever your trading system is, right? To the highs, to new all time highs, whatever risk reward multiple you look for. This is also a key level because this is original kind of structure highs. Now it should be acting as support. Okay, so fetch AI for an AI play for a D pin play. And speaking about D pin, my next pick, what we see here is over the past month, the top performing sector is D pin, decentralized physical infrastructure. I've made a few videos about this, my render bull case, right? And so it's up 16.9% 16, 16 this month. And if you come, you can scroll down here and you can look for the D pin section, right? And so the D pin section is right here. And there's only four here. There's, there's obviously much more D pin projects. And this is where my next pick Helium comes in, right? Helium is up over 72% in the past month. You see a lot of green here. It's a sector that's outperforming. So Helium right here is a very interesting one, right? You can see it's been in this perpetual downtrend, kind of had this head and shoulders, impulsive move, green tag means you wanna buy the dip, buy the pullback to the green shade flip, green shade flip, that trade's doing well if anybody took that. That's a divergent pendulum, no red tags on the way down, just a thing of beauty, strong green candle. And for example, that weekly candle is up 54%. I mean, these are weekly candles. That's absolutely insane. This was obviously structure for the neckline of the head and shoulders, things of that nature. Down on the daily time frame, right? We can see the bottoming happening here the impulse move above the moving averages. When you have green candles and green dots and then green dots on your Jupiter with increasing volume and a strong pendulum, means you wanna buy the pullback to EMAs. So this is what it looks like on a daily, right? You draw your fit from swing low to swing high, pull back to the EMAs, you held that 382, close back above it. Interesting setup for the daily time frame traders. That's kind of the right shoulder. That's the right shoulder, right? So Helium, I have a bull case, so check out the Helium video that I made probably uh, half a year ago or more. Um, very interesting deep in project that is creating a peer-to-peer -peer mobile bandwidth like internet connection and connectivity so a very interesting uh, real world project with a ton of users while we're still in helium i want to point out like some projects you know if you just buy and hold you you got to be a, you got to predict the future right we all know in the tech in 1999 every internet company everyone oh internet, like we've, we've seen it with altcoins too but 99 percent of shit goes to zero you know, if you predicted, if you only bought Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, you killed it, right? But most likely, you chose a lot of shit that went to zero. Same with altcoins in each bull cycle. They leave, they don't come back, they don't make all-time highs. Again, Harmony One, uh, Phantom, whatever it may be. Different coins that go out of style, they don't have the users, right? So it's a tough pick. And so I just want to announce real quick the Jupiter study, which I've been building and is ready for those more active investors or active traders. Um, for example, on a coin like this to show you the, the relative outperformance, which is quite interesting, right? You can see right here, you know, in, in the lifetime for this strategy, for example, that I've tested um, for, for coins of this nature, 560% profits, right? So $100,000 starting balance turned into $560,000. 31% of your trades are profitable. The average trade makes you 9%. Now that sounds, oh, whatever you might think, you might want more, right? It's been a few years. But no, I mean, look at the blue line. This is the buy and hold equity. If you just bought helium at 100,000 and held it, well, that 100,000 at this point in time is worth 24,000. You're down $75,000 because of course, since helium launched, it's bearish. It will go bullish one day, but again, it's hard to predict. So this new Jupiter study allows us to test and iterate and back test algorithmically any kind of momentum system you can imagine with the Jupiter pendulum, right? And so that's pretty interesting. You can see the performance summary. Why is this profitable with 30%? If you think 30% is low, you're crazy. Winning one out of every three trades is fantastic. You can see your stats. That's a good Sortino ratio. And basically the average winning trade here, $72,000. The average losing trade, 13,000. That's why it's profitable even at a 30% hit rate because your average winner is 5.5 times larger than your average loser. 
So a lot of stuff you can experiment with Jupiter study coming soon. You can test all kinds of strategies with that, right? Just want to show you what it looks like, which is with different settings here. Um, you know, this is not that H and T strategy, but this is this um, the Jupiter study, right? So you can set your, your lower time frame Momo and bias bars. You can allow longs or, or allow shorts and it's going to change. You can require green bias bar for longs, require lower time frame bias green if you want to, require a Momo candle for entries. You select your entry strategy, shade for the pendulum flip, shade off, lower time frame Momo candle if you want to trade breakouts, fresh green tag if you want to test breakouts. You select your take profit condition. Uh, do you want to take profit on any of these things right here or none of these things and you rather take profit when you close below an EMA only. You select the EMA. You select your stop loss. You can use an EMA for your long entry, right? So you might have a pendulum flip strategy or a shade flip strategy, but only enter if you close above an EMA, right? Same thing for all the shorts. Um, so obviously thousands of varieties and strategies of different systems you guys can test for momentum, for pullbacks, for breakout trading, right? And so it is a beautiful thing. And that brings us to our last pick for this video. Now it's on the deep in because deep in is the outperforming sector right now. And for much of this bull market, it's been the outperforming sector. I chose another project that I'm very familiar with. It's not here in this list, but that is of course render, right? Render is a project that was on Ethereum. It's now migrated to Solana. Um, it's, it's in this kind of uptrend as well. And render is a, an AI project, right? They're essentially building the centralized physical infrastructure for data centers, decentralized GPU access on the cloud. You can think of render as a decentralized NVIDIA, right? You can get access to the latest GPUs, GPU clusters in the cloud, um, bandwidth, all of that through render in a peer to peer decentralized way without depending on one centralized authority and at a much cheaper and more efficient price as well with more uptime, things of that nature. So render on a daily time frame, there's no rush, right? We're kind of in this short term correction. This most recent move did tag green, but it rejected the moving average and it's back below both moving averages. You haven't had your golden cross and the higher time frame in the daily still tagged red. So there's no rush. Again, these are cryptos you're looking to buy in a dip. Some are more ready than others. There's a shade flip here, right? But it's below the moving averages. And you know, you have this lower time frame red tag that hasn't really, you didn't tag green on that shade flip. So you could take it, stops below the shade flip or below the wick. That's up to you, um, but this is certainly one I've got my eyes on. Um, stops below 618 works as well, right? This is a strong pattern. When you zoom out, you can see that render is the classic cup, breakout, pullback. This thing should explode to all time highs in the second half of this bull market. Look at that accumulation. This whole thing, you know, whether this trade is the entry or we're in a double bottom or, or give yourself a divergence shade flip again or uh, another entry um, doesn't really matter. This whole correction is on this really non existent volume. These dark volume bars are the green candles. Okay. And so, yeah, that shade flip had like barely any volume. So that's another red flag for that one. But, anyways, Guys, hope you enjoyed that video. These are the six altcoins I'm paying attention to. I'm buying on this dip and I'm looking to load up on as soon as they set up. And these are the reasons why. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for announcements for the Jupiter study. Not sure how I'm going to release it yet. Might release just 10 or some very small limited amount to whoever wants to, you know, get first access or, 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 or the first buyers who are interested in that. And then later on at a later date, release it like the other two indicators on a month to month plan. Um, maybe all, yeah, all three together month to month. It's going to be quite expensive, um, but, but it's worth it, right? This is, uh, I'm going to make a whole video about it. So don't worry, probably this week. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be very, very useful. A lot of alpha, sophisticated, sophisticated strategy indicator where you can build your stock strategies, your Forex strategies, your crypto strategies and test them on any time frame and essentially retire yourself, start a hedge fund, start a copy trading, start a signal service, start whatever because you have a back tested proven system of momentum trading with numbers to back it up. All right guys, much love. See you in the next one. Peace.